Uh, again, I want to welcome everybody to the Canada by uh, Rail Across Canada by Train webinar. I'm here with Lisa Poulin of Via Rail Canada, and we're going to talk about uh, traveling in Canada by rail using Via Rail's uh, Via Rail's rail system, traveling aboard some of uh, some of the most iconic train rides in the world, including Via Rail's uh, legendary uh, Canadian service. We're going to talk about some destinations uh, in Canada that you can go to by train uh, to make some some spectacular spectacular rail vacations uh, and have, a, have wonderful holidays while traveling uh, in Canada. We're going to talk about planning a Canada train vacation. We're going to talk about the top train vacations and destinations in Canada. Uh, uh, Lisa will spend some time talking about Via Rail's uh, rail network, uh, trains and onboard services. And we're going to spend a, a, a bit more time on that because that's what people really seem to be interested in learning about what it is like to travel by train, sleeping accommodations, uh, dome cars, and, and such when you're traveling uh, by train on long distance train service and the regional services. And we're going to talk about regional and cross Canada itineraries and then we'll have a little bit of time for a uh, Q&A session uh, at the end of the presentation. First, we're going to start out. We're going to ask a uh, polling question: uh, Who has taken a rail vacation? So we'll open up this poll, and we'll launch the poll, and we'll we'll, we'll launch the poll and see if anybody can uh, give us some answers, and that'll help us tailor the the session to. Uh, to the needs of, of our of our listeners. All right, we're going to close the poll now, and we're going to move on, and we're going to talk about planning a Canada train vacation. What destinations to visit, and over, uh, overnight train travel and shorter daytime trips, types of hotel accommodations, and vacation durations. Uh, when planning any any rail vacation, there's a couple of questions you need to ask uh, before you even get into the planning uh, the planning stages. When thinking about the rail experience themselves, uh, one you want to ask yourself if you want to have a experience while sleeping on the train, or if you want to have daytime rail trips. Um, do you want to spend multiple nights on um, multiple nights and days on the trip, or are you just looking for some shorter excursions? And, and what destinations that you want to go to, because ultimately you're going to have this, these fabulous rail, rail journeys, but you're going to begin and, and end in destinations uh, that you're going to want to explore, particularly in Canada where you have fabulous cities like uh, Vancouver and mountain towns like Jasper and Banff, and, uh, and then all the way to the east coast to uh, French Canada and Quebec, Quebec City and Montreal. So there's, there's fabulous destinations, and to pare down all of your vacation choices, you, you need to think about where, where you want to visit. And then we'll talk about, you want to find out what types of hotel accommodations that you want to have. Do you need, want moderate and superior, so three, three and a half star hotels, or do you want to go to deluxe four, four and five star hotels, uh, hotels such as the, the famous Fairmont uh, Banff Springs Hotel, which is like a, uh, a castle, castle in the Canadian Rockies. And then how long do you want to travel? Because that's going to, that's going to dictate, um, uh, which vacation, how long you're going to spend on the train, and how long you're going to spend in each of the destinations. Top 10 Canadian train, uh, train destinations, and these are all easily accessible by, by rail. So Vancouver, uh, that's where you can begin and end your, uh, a lot of your rail trips. Uh, Jasper, Lake Louise, Banff, and the Canadian Rockies. Uh, Churchill, um, where you can go and see the, uh, the polar bears, uh, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, Quebec City, and Halifax. We'll touch on each of these quickly, and you can learn a little bit about these destinations. We'll spend just a little bit of time on these because we really want to spend the time on experience, uh, what's, what it's like to take the train and use Via Rail to go across Canada, and so you can learn a little bit about, uh, get some in-depth on the different services that are available on the train. So the first uh, first uh, destination we're going to talk about is is Vancouver. It's, uh, it's situated along the coast uh, the coast mountains in Canada. It's uh, Vancouver's the largest uh, uh, the largest city in British Columbia and the third largest in Canada. 
uh, popular things to see and do in, in Vancouver, Stanley Park and its totem poles, shopping along Robson Street, uh, going out and exploring Grouse Mountain. Vancouver is sometimes considered a gateway to Alaska because many people that uh, start and begin their trips in Vancouver uh, pair, pair it up with an Alaska cruise. It's a, it's a, a great place to join an Alaska cruise and it's easily connected to a rail vacation. So Vancouver, that's a place where you can pick up uh, Via, Rail's, um, Via Rail's Canadian service and that'll take you all the way across Canada from there uh, via the Canadian Rockies. Jasper National Park uh, and, and, the, and, uh, and the town of Jasper is uh, it's the largest national park in, in the Canadian Rockies and it sees about 2 million visitors annually. Um, it, it really offers a nice mix of hot springs, lakes, waterfalls, glaciers, plenty of wildlife uh, that you can see when you're in Jasper. Uh, the nice part about uh, Jasper is that an overnight train ride on Via Rail's Canadian 2 uh, out of Vancouver uh, takes you right to Jasper National Park where you can get off and then from there a quick transfer to a hotel where you can begin exploring the Canadian Rockies. Uh, while there you can do things such as a Jasper Tramway, um, you can go down the Icefields Parkway to Lake Louise and Banff. So there's a, there's a, a, there's great, great hiking. There's a, a lot of things to do when you're in, in Jasper, but really it's a, a nice way to get off the train and then start making your way into the Rockies. Lake Louise, uh, an, an iconic, iconic uh, destination in the Canadian Rockies. Many people have seen the picture of the, uh, the famous Chateau Lake Louise um, with, the, with the Victoria Glacier behind it. It really is um, well known for its turquoise waters and, and, that, uh, and, the, and the Chateau. So most of the trips we have in the Canadian Rockies take a stop at Lake Louise. You can spend a night at Lake, uh, spend the night at the Chateau Lake Louise, or uh, right around that area. Or you can, you can then also um, uh, just have a, a stop there for the afternoon and then transfer on to Banff. And when we look at some of the maps a little bit later on in the uh, in the presentation, you'll see how all these pieces fit together, and you'll see how the Via Rail system connects these along with some sightseeing and transfers that can get you in and about the Canadian Rockies and other places in Canada. So then from, from Lake Louise, we have Banff. Banff is uh, really the quintessential railway town. Settled in the 1800s after the Transcontinental Railway was built, it was named after the Scottish, uh, uh, it was named after the Scottish birthplace of Lord Stevens, who was the director of the Pacific Railway. Uh, things to do in and about this, this great mountain town is uh, Sulphur Mountain. Uh, you can uh, take the Banff Gondola. There's great excursions and great uh, and really fabulous uh, sightseeing uh, tours in and around in and around Banff. So a lot of people, what they'll do is they will spend uh, two, three nights in Banff and then transfer right on to there to Calgary to end their trip if they're going to fly home out of Calgary. And again, we'll look at a map here uh, in a little bit and it'll give you some more perspective of where all these towns are and I will walk you through some itineraries. Moving east from, uh, moving east across Canada, um, if you're taking another, another place where people begin and end a lot of their trips is in Toronto. It's the largest city in Canada. It has some some uh, must-see sites and activities, including the CN Tower. It's a landmark in the Toronto skyline. You can see it in this picture here. Um, you have the Harbor Front Center, uh, the Royal Ontario Museum with its collection of six million pieces. So there's a lot to do, um, arts, culture, dining, Toronto, fabulous, uh, fabulous, beautiful city. And um, most of the trips uh, that involve the Cana uh, Via Rail's Canadian service or the corridor service that goes up uh, to Montreal, Quebec City, and the connections onto Halifax include Toronto in the itinerary. And, and the, the, great, the great thing about um, Toronto as well is if you're, staying in, if you're staying in Toronto even for one night, if you stay at the Fairmont, Fort, Fairmont Royal York, it's right across the street from the train station, so it's an easy connection uh, to board your train. Moving on, another destination that people always consider when traveling to Canada, um, in, in French Canada, Montreal. It's the largest city in the, uh, the province of Quebec and the second largest French-speaking city in the world. 
It's considered Canada's cultural capital. Uh, some of the must-see, uh, must-see, um, must-see uh, places in Montreal is the uh, Notre Dame de Montreal Basilica, uh, the old port stretching along the St. Lawrence River, uh, St. Joseph's Oratory, which is built in uh, 1967 as a Roman Catholic basilica atop of Mount uh, Royal. It's uh, it's uh, the city's namesake hill. So Montreal, another another place where people include on their itineraries. Uh, some of the itineraries we'll look at that includes this and via rail service is the uh, Montreal and Quebec. People pair those together, and, and we'll take a look at some itineraries that include that as well. Moving on to Quebec City. Quebec City founded in 1608. It is, uh, uh, it is known as one of the oldest cities in North America and the first European settlement in North America. Uh, and in the 1880s, Quebec became a railway town. And as you can see in this picture here, this is the, uh, uh, this is the, uh, the Chateau uh, Frontenac. Right there in Quebec, it really looks like a castle. It's one of the railway hotels that were, were built across Canada. And this is a Canadian Pacific Railway built hotel. Now, just as the Banff Springs Hotel or the Fairmont Royal York, um, they're all railway hotels. And you can see they have a similar look and feel as you, as you go and explore and uh, start to decide which hotels you'd like to stay at. Uh, but this is one of the iconic hotels. Um, things to explore in, in Quebec, Old Quebec, uh, the Palace Royale. So there's just wandering the streets uh, of, of the old city, uh, the walled city, it, it really is like traveling, uh, traveling to a far off country, but just being uh, not too far away from the United States. So it's an easy, easy, easy connection to get to Quebec City, and um, uh, you, you feel like you've made a, a really, a really long uh, and distant international trip. It's really a fabulous city. The next destination we're going to talk about is is Halifax. Uh, this uh, this this city, uh, the capital of Nova Scotia and the largest city in Canada's maritime region, uh, is easily accessible on Via Rail's Ocean Service out of Montreal, Quebec. It's an overnight train ride, and so if you want to explore the eastern uh, the eastern seaboard of, um, of Canada, Halifax is a must-see destination, and it's a great place to uh, to uh, end a journey in, the, in eastern Canada. You have easy proximity to Peggy's Cove, uh, and, and there's sightseeing tours that can take you to all the, the highlights of this region. So I'm going to ask one more polling question here. Uh, what is your top Canada rail vacation destination? I'll open that up, and we'll just have a little bit of time here uh, to see which trips that people would like to, which destinations people would like to consider when traveling across uh, across. Canada, and then we'll move on, and we're going to talk a bit about popular trains in Canada, and uh, at least we'll talk about Via Rail. And this is where we really want to spend the bulk of our presentation here today, because there's so many exciting things happening at Via Rail Canada, new, uh, new services, refurbished rail cars, um, iconic journeys, and this is um, where you're going to learn the most about what what life is like on board the train, including the types of accommodations and what you can expect. So we'll spend a, a, a bit of time here with Lisa, and then we will uh, move on to some of the packages that are available. I'm going to close up this poll uh, now. Uh, we see a lot of people want to go to Vancouver and uh, Montreal. Uh, and of course, the Canadian Rockies are always high on the list as well. So we'll close this poll now. And I'm going to turn this over to Lisa, and she's going to talk about Via Rail Canada. She's from Via Rail. She uh, knows the network uh, in and out. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to have her here uh, to give us her, her insider's view. Let me turn the presentation over to Lisa, and she can take over and, and, and talk to us about Via Rail and some of the exciting services that are available, including the new Prestige class. Lisa? Perfect. Thank you, Todd. Um, welcome everyone. Um, I just wanted to say thanks for joining today. This is a great opportunity uh, for me to uh, get to speak to you live about all our uh, services uh, with Via Rail and as well as all our top destinations. I'm a little biased. I am from Toronto, so when you all picked Vancouver and Montreal, I was a little upset about that. <laughs> um, 
But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk through, um, kind of take you on a map of, of uh, our services and then feature on each train ride. So um, welcome aboard and uh, here we go. So here, here's the map that outlines um, Canada. Canada is a very large country. A lot of people come to Canada, um, international travelers, and they think they can go from Toronto to Calgary or Edmonton in a day and then carry on to Vancouver. Um, and do all that in a, a two-day span, whereas it would take you four to five days to cross the country uh, from Toronto all the way to Vancouver. So it is a large country. Uh, when you are um, coming into, the, into, into um, Canada, I would suggest you know you do focus on um, the highlights. And, and I mean, the best way to see it all is definitely by train. So um, I'll just kind of highlight on the um, on our corridor service here. Um, this is the majority of our, our transportation hub. This is 95% or sorry, 85% of our 85% of our business is, is within Ontario and Quebec City, um, and I'll touch on that later on. Um, and then we'll head to the East Coast. But I want to start off with sort of what our um, iconic rail journey is on Via Rail, and that is called the Canadian. And that's the um, the train that departs Toronto and Vancouver uh, three days a week during high season, and it takes you from Toronto or vice versa, um, all the way to Vancouver. Um, and it takes three nights and four, four nights. You arrive on the fifth day, and um, it is a three full day journey. So you're on the train getting full daylight for three full days. Um, so as you can hear, you, as you can see here, um, it is, I'm not sure if you're familiar with kilometers. I should have put that into miles. <laughs> um, but that's, it's about four. 4,400 kilometers um, of amazing, breathtaking views. We like to refer uh, to the Canadian as a land cruise. Um, this is definitely something you want to uh, take the time to enjoy. It's on a lot of people's bucket list, um, and it's, it's one of the legendary uh, long haul journeys uh, of the world. So I'm going to talk to you about the, this train um, and its amazing um, views. Obviously, the scenic, the, the views that you go through, um, the breathtaking Rockies, obviously, the prairies and everything, and then as well as the, the lakes and the, um, the small towns you'll cross through, uh, as well as the unbelievable food and service you do receive on the train. So this is a full service uh, dining car with chefs on board. Um, we do have... Um, two chefs on board that make all your meals fresh every day, and they're usually catered to the region you're going through. So as an example, if you are starting in the East Coast, you'll see a lot, you know, options on the fish and the salmon, and I mean, and then when you're going through Alberta, where they're very famous for their beef, um, as well as the wines are catered to that region as well. So that's one of the, um, the special features that we do offer going through the country. Um, at this time, I just sort of want to take you um, I just want to take you, oopsie, sorry, did I miss, did I go, I think I missed one. What I want to do at this time, just so you have an idea of what I'm talking about, because we do offer um, different classes of service on our Canadian train. So what I wanted to do at this time was just show you a video. Um, and this kind of outlines um, our classes of service um, and also featuring highly on our new prestige class. And the prestige class, um, is just launching, uh, we, we saw, we've had a soft launch, but we are just launching uh, this month. Um, so we were working out all the kinks, and now it's, it's a great, great addition to our Canadian train. And I just want to take this time and show you this short video so you have an idea of um, what you would be experiencing when you two take the train. Offering one of the world's most renowned rail experiences, the legendary Canadian train links Toronto and Vancouver. It's now featured on the Canadian $10 bill. The legend now includes a touch of prestige. You can immerse yourself in a luxurious ambiance with even more spacious cabins in our new prestige sleeper class. This new class is part of our promise to offer you a service that is unrivaled in its personalized attentions. A dedicated concierge will be assigned to your car to attend to your comfort and needs at all times. The modular leather couch in your cabin transforms into a cozy Murphy bed for two at night. Your cabin is also equipped with a private washroom with shower, 
a mini bar, and an extra large window that offers stunning views of all that Canada has to offer. The Canadian also offers a Sleeper Plus class, renowned for its comforts. Several accommodation options are available to travelers in this class of service. Whether you opt for a sleeper berth or a cabin with private washroom, you'll find yourself soothed by the gentle rhythm of the train. Stroll over to the dining car to savor the succulent meals prepared on board by our chefs and served up by our attentive staff, all while your eyes feast on the magnificent scenery rolling by. During the course of your journey, take a seat in one of the panoramic sections to enjoy the breathtaking 360-degree views of the majestic Rockies. You can also sip a specialty coffee or take advantage of the bar service in this modern, fully refurbished setting. The many onboard activities we propose will help you get better acquainted with your fellow travelers. The friendships you make during the journey are sure to make as lasting an impression as the extraordinary experience that awaits you on board. And last but not least, the majestic landscapes that dot this route will inspire a lifetime of memories. This is the unforgettable journey you deserve. Here, I'll move that over for you. Get this presentation. There you go. Thank you. So sure. hopefully you were all able to um, get the volume on that and experience that video. And um, if there's any technical problems you had, if you go onto YouTube um, and you, um, you, in the search, just put Via Rail Prestige Class, and you can watch that video again if you wanted to sort of um, get a better idea. Um, but just to show you that this is sort of the, um, like an, an overview shot of the car. So you can see they're a lot larger, um, the Prestige Class. And again, like I mentioned, that it is, um, it's exclusively only on the, the Canadian train. Uh, some of the amenities and services that you will see that are different um, uh, from our existing sleeper touring class would be that the, uh, the bath, you have your own private washroom and shower. So um, you have access in your bedroom, you have your shower, it's a fully inclusive experience with all your alcohol. Um, you can go anywhere on the train and order a drink um, and all your alcohol is included. Um, you have preferential dining time. So with our dining car service, we do usually have three, three uh, sitting times available. So when you are in the prestige class, you have preferential dining um, times every single uh, meal. You also could have the option to have your meals served in, breakfast served in the cabin along with any meal. You do have your pri own private uh, concierge as well. So they're dedicated to any of your needs, um, any questions you may have, um, they're there to assist. Um, you also have a uh, flat screen television with on-demand movies. Um, it's kind of nice to sort of maybe put the watch a movie in that big luxurious bed <laughs> as well. You have a stock mini bar, um, and then you can also request prior to your uh, departure what type of um, alcohol you would prefer in your mini bar, um, which is, is okay. So uh, during the day, and you'll see sort of a day and night shot, you also have uh, a large sectional couch, uh, and night it turns into the large double bed. Um, so no, so no more bunk, files, bunk bed style beds that we um, are used to seeing in the sleeper class. Um, you can just see some photos here that kind of give you an idea of what it looks like with the bed drawn. Uh, sorry, the bed, the couch, and then as well the bed drawn in the diagram. Um, these cabins are, like I said, 50% larger than our sleeper touring class, so you get you are getting a lot more space. Um, here are some photos of the uh, day setup. So these are actual live photos of the car. Um, the couch as well, um, you can see the service you receive in your room. Um, we do offer a champagne toast, and this is to all first class travelers, so if you are traveling in prestige or sleeper touring class, you do have a champagne uh, send off, um, which is great. You can also see the difference, so on the left that is the car, um, that is the bedroom that you would be in if you were in a sleeper um, class, and then the prestige class, the window is about 60% larger. So it's really nice views. They did think of everything when they were converting um, these cars over. 
Um, obviously, the most beautiful part of this journey is the scenery, so they want you to see everything. Now you can see what the bedroom looks like at night. Um, what a spectacular uh, setup to be able to traveling across the country in this room on that bed and the views and everything. It is definitely a breathtaking journey. So that would be our prestige class. Um, next, I'm going to talk to you um, about the service cards that are available uh, in both the prestige class and the sleeper class. So all our um, service cards, which include our park cards, uh, and our Skyline cars have been renovated along with all the uh, prestige class cars or the prestige sleeping cars. So you can see that they are located at the, usually the tail end of the car um, and they do offer uh, three types of areas um, for the convenience of um, there's a lounge obviously where you can grab cocktails, there's a social area, um, you can watch movies, um, there's a bar area, you can have your coffee in the morning there, you can come in and and sort of stroll down and grab coffee to go. Um, there's usually pastries, coffee, teas, and juices as well as um, sitting out there during the day. And then once you go into um, the back end of the car, this is the lounge. So this would be the dome, um, the dome lounge where you can sort of, obviously you have uh, views all around the car. So this would be at the back of the train. Um, and this is only accessible to the prestige class and the sleeper touring class. So that's sort of an added benefit as well. Um, you also have um, a stairwell that goes up and then you are into the dome car. So that would, that's also an, an extra bonus um, to see the views when you're going through the Rocky Mountains at a panoramic style. It is quite, um, it is quite spectacular. Um, so now I'm just going to sort of talk to you about the next level of service, which would be the Sleeper Plus class. Um, this class is, um, Definitely it's been our, our, one of our, our um, highlighted classes um, with, with now the introduction of the prestige. Um, but this is definitely a, a comfortable um, way to travel as well. Um, included in this would be access to all the lounges in your pre-boarding stations. Um, so Vancouver, Toronto, and Winnipeg. You'd have access to all the lounges in the stations. Um, pre-boarding privileges. You have the sleeping accommodations are included along with all your meals and a selection of Canadian wines. The wines in the alcohol in Sleeper Plus is not included, so that would be um, on per item. So all inclusive would be your meals. And like I said, the, the dining on board these trains is unbelievable. The private, sh the, the chefs on board are highly trained and they are spectacular. And the food that comes out of these small little kitchens are just unbelievable. Um, again, you have the welcome reception on board with the canapes and sparkling wine. Um, you do have the com comfortable cabins um, as well, so you can sort of see at the bottom there what one of the um, what the cabin would look like during the day, and I'll flip over and show you what it would look like at night, and as well the um, exclusive use of the lounges and the park car. So you can see on the picture there is the dome car, um, which would be the end of that park car. Where you can sort of see the dome, and the Skyline cars as well have um, have the dome cars. Um, and they are exclusive to uh, the Sleeper, Sleeper Plus and the Prestige Class. So now, as you can see, the, um, the, um, the different accommodations for sleeping. So this would be our, our Sleeper Plus cabin for two. So at, at the top, you can see it is armchairs during the day with the window. Uh, you do have a small closet, very small closet, and um, as well a vanity mirror and a, and a toilet. So when you are in the Sleeper Plus class, you do have access to a shower in each car, um, but you do have to realize that you will be sharing this uh, shower with the other passengers that will be in the car with you. Um, not all at the same time, though. <laughs> uh, the nighttime conversion, and this is, um, this is what it looks like on this class, and that's where I referred to the bunk beds before. Um, these, the, this cabin converts into bunk beds. So you can see the murky style beds that pull out and then the one comes down from the roof. It's very European, um, that's the type of style. And then with the, um, the ladder for access to the, up, the upper bunk. So this is the cabin for two. Uh, the cabin for one is quite roomy. Um, again, it is the, the chair during the day and then it converts over, um, the bed comes out over the uh, entire, to take up the entire space of the cabin. So your bed does cover over your um, toilet um, during the evening. 
Um, but uh, this is probably one of my most uh, favorite rooms on the train. It is very comfortable. Um, and, and as well, you do have access, like I said, into all the service cars when you are in the sleeper plus cabin, for one. The next one is a, um, the berth. And again, this is um, a very European style. You might look familiar. So it is the seats during the day. Uh, you do have a semi-private uh, couch style seat facing each other. And then during the evening, that it does convert down um, into the bunk styles again. These are um, separated, as you can see, for privacy. You do have the curtains. So in the other bedrooms, you do have locked doors. Um, in the berths, you do have the, um, the privacy separated by windows. Or sorry, separated by the curtains. Um, but again, very, very comfortable beds. And with the rocking motion of the train, it, it's, it's very easy to fall asleep. Um, I just want to sort of touch on the point too that the, um, the economy class is also available. Um, as, as it is an option and um, you do have a seat that sort of um, leans back in, during evening as for, for sort of like a sleeper. Um, but it, nothing is included in that ticket, it's just your seat. Uh, the next um, train trip I want to discuss with you is the uh, Jasper to Prince Rupert route. So you can see on the map, um, this train connects out of Jasper uh, once you are going through Alberta. Um, if you do want to get off and take this journey up to Prince Rupert, uh, it is a, a two-day daylight journey through the Rockies, and um, it is uh, supposedly one of the most beautiful scenic routes that we offer uh, our, travel our passengers. So keep that in mind if you do have uh, lots of time and you want to get off the Canadian, or even just come into Jasper and take this. That's I mean, it, it is an amazing um, rail journey, and I know this one connects um, you to um, as well with the BC ferries. And there's an, um, and I think Todd's going to touch back on this as well. The options to do sort of a mixed land and um, um, it'll, sorry, a land vacation as well as a train vacation into Alaska. So, um, what is included in the, um, the Jasper Prince Rupert? We do, again, we offer the uh, different classes of service. So we do, um, like I mentioned, it is a two-day um, daily cruise. Uh, and you are going through the, uh, the views of the Jasper National Park, the Canadian Rockies, um, and the train overnight in Prince uh, George. So in Prince George, you do stop. You are in Prince George overnight. And then the trip continues on during the day. So as you can see from this, these pictures, the uh, panorama car, um, we do have this car um, on the Canadian train, and then as well we do offer it during peak season during, on the uh, Jasper Prince Rupert. So this car is quite spectacular when you are going through all the, the peak parts of the mountains through Canada um, to have that ac the, 20, the panoramic view. Um, the, um, the daily between Prince George and Prince Rupert is approximately 12 hours. So you get in on to, back onto the train the following morning and you continue on to Prince Rupert. And from Prince Rupert there are connections with, um, uh, sorry, with uh, the BC ferries. And then again, Todd will touch back on this. And then if you do the reverse trip, Prince Rupert into Jasper, you can connect with Vias Canadian. So those are some travel options as well to package. Um, Winnipeg to Churchill. Um, I've been with VIA for 15 years, and this is one trip I have not done, and I really, really want to do, because this is one of the most uh, talked about trips. It's sort of a hidden gem as well. Um, sorry, that <laughs> it is a hidden gem that not a lot of people know about, but once they travel on this train, uh, they have nothing but amazing things to say about it. So the Winnipeg Churchill is a basically a once-in-a-lifetime Arctic journey. Um, when you are traveling through uh, on this train between usually uh, late September to mid-November, that is the peak um, polar bear spotting time. So that's usually when you can see the uh, polar bears up close, obviously in the tundra buggies. Um, this is a two-day two uh, rail journey, and you are on the train, um, and you are overnight on this train. So this is the train where you leave Winnipeg and you go up to, actually let me just go back and show you that map, sorry. Um, so you go from Winnip you leave Winnipeg, and then you would stop in Thompson, and then from Thompson you continue on to Churchill. So that would sort of be the um, the schedule of that train. Uh, in the summertime, again, it's not just you can't just take this train during September to November, but there are 
it is a year-round journey. In the summertime, the features would usually be the uh, beluga whales and obviously the northern lights, um, which, which are spectacular. So it, this train offers economy class again, and then the sleeper class. So the sleeper class is um, is uh, exactly what I explained to you on the Canadian. Um, you are um, on the train uh, with a bedroom accommodation and your meals. So that was recently introduced, and that's um, on during our peak season as well as as low season. So just to let you know that during our um, our high season, which usually starts from May beginning of May, uh, which is pretty much now, all the way up to end of October, that is our high season. So when I say high and low season, that's what you sort of get an idea of what I'm, I'm talking about. So this train does run all year round, um, but the sleeper class is provided um, as well all year round, and your meals are now included. Um, this is sort of, again, what I was touching on before, um, Ontario, Quebec City. So as you can see, it is a very busy map. Um, we do have um, the blue map, the blue line, the dark blue line is basically what I'm referring to when I am talking about the corridor. So the corridor is uh, a heavy travel, um, it's sort of a business travel um, uh, route between Toronto, Montreal, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal to Quebec City, as well as Montreal to Ottawa and Toronto to Windsor. So those are the core routes that we, um, that we, we service. And um, we do offer two, cl two classes of service on these trains, being business and economy class. We, um, the bonus of the Ontario Quebec City corridor is that they have, we have many frequencies several times a day um, servicing the business traveler, uh, the, the friends going home to visit fam uh, the people, passengers going home to visit friends and family. Uh, we do have a lot, we carry a lot of students going home from university or going to school. Um, as well, just a lot of uh, leisure travel, usually during the summer peak time. Um, and the best thing about this is you're traveling um, in most of the destinations. The train stations are downtown. So if you are taking the train from Toronto, um, and trust me, you do not want to be around Toronto this time of year uh, with all the construction and we're getting the Pan Am games as well, the best thing to do would be to leave your car at home and take the train. So. That's just some advice. <laughs> um, and definitely Vacations by Rail can help you obviously plan that rail journey. Um, so we do have the uh, business and economy class. And you can see from these photos, we've recently refurbished all our business class cars. So it is a really high-end, nice service, uh, very comparable to a, a business class you see on airlines. Um, you do have seat selection. You have pre-boarding privileges. Again, our lounges in um, most of our stations are brand new. The Union Station in Toronto is, is beautiful. It's just something you need to see. You can sort of see at the bottom there. That's just a, a little glimpse of it. Um, you do have uh, the complimentary uh, beverages, so all your alcohol is included. So if you are tra traveling from Toronto to Montreal to connect with the ocean, um, this would be a great way to travel. Uh, we do offer wireless internet, complimentary on each, all of our corridor trains. Um, each seat has a power outlet. Uh, we do offer a selection of three course meals, and we have like special service requests available. So, you know, if you are um, gluten or allergies or um, vegetarian, we do offer a, a lot of, of special requests that you we can accommodate. Um, as well, we are very um, uh, compatible for disability. So we do have wheelchair uh, tie downs, and this is on all our trains. So if you are traveling with disabilities and everything, we are very accommodating. Um, we're probably the most accommodating uh, mode of transport when it just does come to that. Um, so and then as well, we do have the ocean train. So here we are heading to the east coast now. Um, the east, the ocean train, you are traveling through um, it's a journey that uh, is overnight. It's alongside the St. Lawrence River. And you cross the provinces of New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. Uh, the train departs Montreal three times per week, and it usually takes any, um, approximately 20 hours to arrive into your destination of Halifax, Nova Scotia. Um, what we do um, in this, um, in, on this train, sorry, is we do offer the different classes of service. So we have the economy, the sleeper, and the sleeper plus. Um, and just so you have an idea of what's included in these, um, also, I, I should probably back up and mention that the, the ocean train um, is serviced by our Renaissance cars. So if you kind of notice, the, um, the trains that go out west are our HEP cars, and they're old, um, they're very uh, retro, unique cars. 
Um, they're, you know, they're 50 years old plus. Um, a lot of them have been refurbished, like I mentioned. But it's just a very um, unique style car. Where the Renaissance cars were acquired um, about 10 or 12 years ago, uh, we purchased them from uh, a European railway and brought them over to Canada. So they are more upgraded. Um, you know, a lot of people have, pref have different preferences. So some people do like the old style of the Canadian trains. But some people enjoy the, the new, fresh looks of the Renaissance cars. So the, these are only offered um, as sleeper cars on our Renaissance train in the ocean. Sorry, the Renaissance cars are only offered on the ocean. So you'll see the bedroom accommodation is sort of similar in the sense it is seats during the day and then the beds pull down at night. We do have a lounge car where you can sort of mingle with other guests. Um, there's TVs, there's a bar, so you can sort of um, have some uh, social time as well. But you can get an idea of what the cars look like from the outside on the top picture there. Um, again, as I was saying, the, the classes of service um, uh, are very similar. We do offer the economy class, um, the sleeper class, and the sleeper plus class. So the difference between sleeper and sleeper plus is basically your meals. So your meals are all included in your sleeper plus class. Um, as well, these cars, like I had mentioned, they're a lot newer. Um, and they do have bathrooms in each um, cabin as well as a uh, shower. So these meals, again, like I mentioned, there is no chef on board, but they are catered meals. We do use the same meals that we offer on our uh, corridor business class. So they are fresh. They're coming straight from our supplier, and they are served um, hot every, every time. So uh, those are offered in the, um, the Sleeper Plus class all year round. As well, I should mention too, um, on our Montreal um, Ottawa, sorry, on our Montreal Halifax train, we do offer um, uh, during our peak season, we do have a, a sort of an educational um, aspect where we do have a somebody that comes on the train and talks to our passengers, you know, about the sort of a surprise and delight about, you know, when you're going through the specific regions. Um, uh, they give you lessons on the lobster traps. They talk about the ghost ships and the Acadian traditions um, and that sort of thing as well, the music and everything like that. Another thing I should sort of say too, now that we're talking sort of about the surprise and delight, um, the Canadian, we do offer different things. So we do have onboard entertainment. We do offer artists to come on board and sing to our passengers and stuff like that. Sometimes we have estheticians. We would have um, massage therapists. We just sort of change it up. So it's it's something most passengers don't know about going into it, so it is a nice surprise and delay. But you know, just so you're aware, like there there is entertainment on board. You are um, you are on the train, and the time flies. It's just such a relaxing, um, special way to travel. And like I mentioned before, it is a land cruise. You are seeing the country, um, which most Canadians don't even get to do, um, and and it's just beautiful. So I definitely highly recommend uh, you do take the train in Canada. And you do um, get to experience these lovely, lovely, lovely destinations. Uh, I have done this trip many times for, from Toronto to Vancouver, and I would highly recommend it. So I, I think Todd, I'm going to pass this back to Todd now, and then we can take questions after. But I know Todd wants to touch on all the packages that we can offer, he can offer um, to you regarding all our destinations. Well, thank you, Lisa. That was that was that was great information, and I think um, it, it's great to have someone uh, like yourself from Via Rail to explain all the different options. Uh, we covered at uh, least covered a lot of information from the different sleeping accommodations uh, to the different rail experiences. And you've uh, talked to one of our rail specialists at Vacations by Rail. Um, we'll we'll definitely be able to to answer uh, answer uh, more questions that you have, as well as um, help you make some of the decisions that are right to make. Uh, to, to make your vacation uh, the best that it can be. So now, uh, speaking of the vacations, let's talk about some of the vacation packages. And we're going to look at uh, a number of vacations that incorporate the trains that, that Lisa touched on. And, and we can see how they fit into the destinations. Uh, one thing I want to mention now, and, and you should keep in mind, this is really a great time to travel up to Canada. Uh, the, the US dollar has strengthened. and uh, as of right now, one U.S. dollar gets you a dollar twenty Canadian, 
Uh, we've seen it go even as high in the last, say, four to six weeks as $1.27 Canadian. And vacations by rail, what we've done is um, if you keep an eye on our specials, we have some specials going on right now. So any of these packs you see, um, there's a currency adjustment that we make, a currency uh, a discount when you come and you book now. So up to, um, up to $400 per person depending on the package. So it is a great time to go to Canada. It's a really great value, and uh, it's, it's a, a fabulous international destination just so close to home. So let's talk about the Across Canada by Train. And you can see that this, this particular package here, 14 days, including Via Rail's iconic Canadian service, corridor service, the ocean service, it really covers, uh, except for the trip up to Churchill and uh, the, uh, the train that uh, goes out to uh, Prince Rupert um, from, from Jasper, it, it covers uh, uh, many of the services uh, that, that we've talked about. And I'm just going to trace this quickly for you and show you how it all kind of fits together. This is a, a great map, and, and it'll help you understand some of the other packages. So here, uh, taking this particular trip, uh, the dot here that's one night in Vancouver, you arrive in Vancouver, uh, you do some sightseeing, uh, spend, uh, spend the morning, board the, train, uh, in, in, board the train, and then uh, head out overnight to the Canadian, through the Canadian Rockies, arriving up here, uh, Jasper, Edmonton, and then you have three more nights on the train, takes you all the way to Toronto. So that's the Canadian right there. And it's four nights on the train, and this package, one night in Vancouver, sightseeing, and then on to Toronto for two nights, an excursion down to, to uh, Niagara Falls, the corridor service up to Montreal, spend a night in Montreal, uh, connection up to Quebec City, two nights Quebec City, and then um, overnight train here on Via Rail's Ocean to Halifax for two nights. So you can see this is a, a, fa a fabulous, uh, fabulous package that includes all the, all the uh, trains that we've talked about. You can have the overnight sleeping experience on Via Rail's Canadian service. Uh, indulge yourself with the Prestige class because the, the Prestige class, it, 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 it's an amazing service. Uh, there's nothing like that on these types of trains in the United States, in, 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 uh, the United States or Canada. Uh, Via Rail really is, has uh, done a top-notch job making this, uh, this amazing journey even uh, even more more amazing with the prestige class. So uh, consider that when you're traveling across. And then, but this is a 14 day uh, 14 day trip, and it covers all going coast to coast essentially. We're going to move on to the next trip here, and we'll just again touch on these. We have if you go to our website vacationsbyrail.com, you can have uh, all the all the detail of these itineraries um, just uh, just available. Uh, with some additional photos and information, and of course, uh, calling our call center and our rail specialist, they'll be able to answer answer more uh, questions for you. Now, this is uh, this nine-day trip here that we're looking at. Uh, this is really just kind of this is Via Rail's Canadian with some uh, Vancouver, uh, Va Vancouver and Toronto on each end with some stays there and some sightseeing. Um, four days on board again. Uh, consider it with Via Rail's Prestige class. The, I think looking at this map now is a good time to mention that when we have these packages on our website, uh, you know, a lot of times people will fly to into Vancouver, uh, or they'll fly into Toronto, and they're going to want to extend their stay. You're in Vancouver, uh, you might want to go out to uh, uh, Victoria and uh, have some have some high tea in in, in, in Victoria at the Fairmont Empress. Uh, we can add those on. We have some pre and post night packages, so you can make this really a a, a great experience that covers uh, more of Canada. You can get more in depth, and and also on this particular trip, uh, you can see that you know again a lot of these that start in Toronto, uh, that end in Vancouver, beginning Vancouver. It's a great place to uh, a great place to begin a. Uh, uh, a beginner end of uh, your trip with a, an Alaska cruise. So. Nine days on uh, nine days, two nights in Vancouver, sightseeing experiences. Um, four days on board Via Rail's Canadian service to Toronto. Two nights in Toronto, and then you can add extensions on either uh, either end of those. Trans Canada by Rail in the Rockies, and this is how we're going to look at how how you add Via Rail uh, with a stop in Jasper, and then uh, do sightseeing in. Uh, in Jasper, Banff, Lake Louise. This is a 12-day package, one night in Vancouver. Um, I'll trace this out for you. One night in Vancouver, 
the overnight experience on Via Rail's Canadian service, and then two nights in Jasper. So you get off the train, you spend, uh, you transfer to your hotel, spend another day in Jasper doing some sightseeing, uh, going out and seeing some of the seeing some of the uh, the wildlife and some of uh, Jasper National Park. And then what you do is you do a transfer back down to uh, to Lake Louise, spend a night in Lake Louise, and then uh, on to Banff for two nights, transfer back to Jasper, and then uh, again catch Via Rail's uh, Via Rail's Canadian service that'll take you uh, all the way to Toronto. So this particular trip from Jasper down to Lake Louise to Banff, the Icefields Parkway, considered one of the most scenic routes in North America. Just spectacular, seeing glaciers uh, going through the uh, going through Jasper and Banff National Park. Uh, it's a, a spectacular spectacular day as you travel down there. Uh, go out onto one of Ice Explorers, onto uh, onto the glaciers. So a lot to see and do when you're in the national parks. And, and think about it as well, that you can extend your stays in any of these places if you want to do such things as hiking or get more into in-depth uh, sightseeing and touring. Um, so that's a 12-day tour. And then we'll, we'll move on to uh, start making our way to the east on some of these packages. And let's go on to, uh, first we'll do the Canadian Rockies by rail. Canadian Rockies by rail, uh, this is a great way to experience Via Rail's Canadian service for one night on the train and then just really get into the Canadian Rockies. So what a lot of people uh, do is they just um, uh, fly into Vancouver or take the train um, um, out of Seattle or uh, connect up with um, uh, one of the trains out of the United States up to Vancouver and then spend the night, do some sightseeing, and then Via Rail's service up to uh, overnight train up to Jasper. Uh, the sleeping accommodations on the train. M one of my, uh, anytime we talk about sleeping accommodations on a train, sleeping on the, on the train, uh, w one of the great things about it is, you know, you get up in the morning. Here you get up in the morning, you're in the heart of the Canadian Rockies. You're going to the dining car, having breakfast, uh, venture up to one of the, the dome cars, uh, one of the domes on Via Rail's uh, Canadian and just taking the sights. It's, it's, it's really spectacular. I think you really get a sense of journey when you do uh, one of the overnight trains because that sleeping on sleeping on the train and then getting up, um, you you really get a, you get a sense of the distance. You, you, the the journey really comes alive. It's and then when you arrive in Jasper, you're spending the night in Jasper. You uh, spend a night, uh, do some, then connect to the Icefields Parkway down to Lake Louise. Spend your night in Lake Louise at the Chateau Lake Louise. On to Banff for two nights again, doing uh, sightseeing, whether it's uh, taking the uh, the gondola up Sulphur Mountain or uh, going and exploring some of Banff National Park, and then on to Calgary uh, just to fly home. So transfer right from Banff right to Calgary. All these itineraries we've talked about, uh, they don't you don't require a car. Um, everything is is um, there's no car rentals here. Sightseeing uh, sightseeing's in, included. Um, you have the transfers um, uh, in 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 most of the destinations. There's transfers available uh, in the sightseeing, so there's no cars. You don't have any of that 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 stress or hassle of that goes along with with driving. So you can really take in all the scenery. So that's a seven-day Canadian Rockies by rail. Very popular package with vacations by rail um, is this is this package here. Uh, Pacific Northwest Rail Journey. Uh, this is uh, really takes in some of the best sightseeing you're going to see in in uh, the Canadian Rockies in Alberta and British Columbia. In what you what you have is, and I'll highlight it here: a night in Vancouver, again via rails, overnight train uh, uh, into the Canadian Rockies, Jasper for two nights, daylight service on via rails. Uh, uh, it was formerly called the Skeena, uh, the, the Jasper Prince George, spend the night in Prince George, and on to Prince Rupert for two nights. Here um, we have flyback to Vancouver, uh, flights included. But what some people will do is they'll take a, a ferry from uh, Prince Rupert uh, to Port Hardy, where they'll get on Vancouver Island, and then uh, pick up maybe a, a, here they might pick up a car rental or do some transfer down to uh, uh, Victoria and then uh, ferry over to Vancouver and make it a much longer uh, trip, which includes uh, some uh, uh, a beautiful ferry ride, uh, uh, Vancouver Island, Victoria, and then on uh, back on to Vancouver for a really spectacular, uh, spectacular circle trip. So um, 
so that is an option and if you want to explore that option our rail specialists at vacations by rail can assist you with that and turn this eight day uh, eight day trip into uh, a, a, a very nice circle journey that includes um, ferries and uh, sightseeing and um, it, it really really exploring that area in depth along with the with the great via rail uh, via rail scenic routes that we have here moving on we're going to now we're now we're heading east polar bear in Churchill adventure um, Lisa touched on this one this is a, a a popular a popular trip as well uh, seeing the polar bears uh, up close up in Churchill taking via rail service up to Churchill spending three nights there getting on a tundra buggy driving out um, getting out to see the to see the to see the polar bears um, really it's something on a lot of people's bucket lists as well um, if you go at different times of the year the polar bears may not be there we have a polar bear experience you could also see beluga whales there's a there's a, really if you want to get up up close with some some amazing wildlife this is the trip and then the flight back down to Winnipeg so um, seven day polar bear and Churchill adventure uh, something to consider for uh, when you're traveling to Canada now we're gonna get into some of the the trips across the uh, the corridor the Montreal and Quebec this is really a great uh, French Canadian experience three nights Montreal via rails uh, service up to Quebec City for three nights um, here's where you can choose between via rails um, um, economy or business class service the, a lot of our packages the way they're set up is that it, depending on the class of service of hotel whether it's uh, uh, moderate superior deluxe that may dictate what type of hotel uh, what type of train service that you're going to get but if you if you'd like to uh, if you go with moderate superior moderate hotels uh, and you want to upgrade to business class service on this particular leg it's no problem to do at all and that goes with all of our packages they're completely uh, customizable we can tailor make them for you um, but um, just from my own personal experience uh, I would I would uh, I would I would do the upgrade have the uh, have the business class service I have a nice meal on the train um, and and, and really treat yourself when you're doing this when you're doing this nice trip between Montreal and Quebec City so uh, consider that as a as a nice uh, a nice upgrade uh, for yourself for that for that rail leg and again these are three days in the Montreal and, and uh, three days Quebec City including site city uh, touching on some of the highlights that we talked about earlier in the earlier as well as other uh, uh, other uh, sightseeing and activities Quebec to the Maritime, Maritimes. This is a this is a sightseeing. Uh, this is um, another another one that includes the uh, overnight an overnight train uh, via rails ocean service. Um, let's just look here. Uh, Montreal for one night. Uh, the daylight train on the corridor up to Quebec sightseeing in Quebec City, and then the overnight to Halifax. Spend a couple nights in Halifax. You know you can. Uh, you can extend this as well. Um, we have some packages that include car rental, Prince Edward Island. You can go do Prince Edward Island out of here. It's a, it's a, uh, I think it's a great package if you just ha have a limited amount of time to explore um, uh, French Canadian region and then go into um, up to Nova Scotia. But it's also a great uh, base package for exploring the area more. So if you want to spend some additional time in, in Quebec, uh, uh, that's something to consider. I mean, you look at this uh, package here, one night in Quebec, I guarantee when you arrive there, uh, uh, one night's not going to do it. To, to add another night in there would, would really, uh, really enhance that experience. Uh, and then when you get to Halifax, you could do the same. So we can do, we can do, we can do uh, pretty much any customization that you would like to really enhance this experience. But I think this is a great, a great base package uh, to go get a, a really nice, uh, nice taste of the area. And we'll move on to uh, rail cruise combinations. One of the things that, uh, if, if you go onto our website, vacationsbyrail.com, what you're going to see is uh, that rail cruises are available um, on a lot of our packages. And Canada is a great, a great place to um, uh, add a cruise on, whether it's the Trans Canada by Rail and Alaska by Sea package, or just the Canadian Rockies with an Alaska cruise, 
or we have new trips like the Quebec City to Toronto, a nine-day vacation featuring the river cruise aboard the, the Canadian Empress between Quebec and Kingston, and then rail from Kingston to Toronto. Eastern Canada rail and cruise, that's become a very popular trip to take people uh, New England and, and Atlantic Canada, Eastern Canada by rail, um, and uh, then uh, a package that also includes Toronto. Uh, a lot of people look at this and, and start to think, well, th this might be a good trip to do uh, around the fall time and when the uh, when the colors start to change. And I think when you look at a lot of these trips, Montreal, Quebec, um, you know, if you're looking for a great fall destination, uh, these uh, these are some some really uh, some ones to put high on your list because you're in that New England, uh, the New England, the uh, Atlantic Canada area where you'll have some uh, some beautiful colors and some nice fall weather to really get you uh, get you in the spirit of the fall time. Pre and post vacation packages. You know, we've talked a little bit about that, and you'll see if you go to vacationsbyrail.com. Um, if you go to Canada, you'll see a lot of our packages just do begin. Uh, you know, one night Vancouver, one night Toronto. Kind of gets people uh, set up to take the train. But we do find that uh, people have been asking for an enhanced experience, whether or not in Vancouver, whether they want to do a um, a trip up to Whistler, or they want to go on to Victoria, or they want to do a uh, maybe a tri-city package beforehand, which is like a Seattle, uh, Victoria, Vancouver, then uh, connect on to Via Rail's Canadian service to go head on to Toronto. The, you know, those are uh, those are all doable, and those are are popular add-ons. You know, we talked about um, we talked about uh, Nova uh, being up to in Halifax. Uh, popular add-ons, Eastern Canada, Prince Edward Island. It's the backdrop of the famous Anne of Green Gables book. So, you know, those, look at these and then think about how you might want to uh, to make some adjustments to make it really a, a spectacular uh, spectacular trip and the right holiday for you. One of the things at Vacations by Rail that we really pride ourselves on is that uh, we want to be the trusted authority on rail so that we can uh, work with uh, work with all of our clients to provide them with a really, uh, really ask those questions to make sure the vacation and holiday uh, meet your needs. So if you want to sleep on the train, if you want to have uh, the prestige class, or you want to do the sleepers, you want to um, uh, uh, the the sleeper plus class, if you want to um, have uh, Fairmont hotels all the way through, or you want to do some uh, have a have a car rental in a destination. Uh, we want to ask you uh, get the, that information from you so that we can create the experience and then compare and contrast all the various packages and train options to find the one that 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 is right and and gives you that that rail vacation experience that uh, that you're looking for. So keep that in mind. Uh, we're we're here to provide you uh, with with top service whether it's pre. Uh, during and, and, and post travel to make sure that uh, th this is really a, the vacation to remember. As a thank you for attending our Across Canada by Train webinar, we want to offer each of you a $25 per person off your next rail vacation. Um, I mentioned promo code Across Canada at the time of booking. Uh, again, there's never been a uh, there's never been a better time to go to Canada. I touched on this earlier, uh, and it and it really is true with the with the strength of the U.S. dollar. Um, it, it's such a, an amazing value that's so close to home. So uh, put it on your put it on your list, and and make sure you take advantage of uh, of these opportunities. You can save up to eight hundred dollars per couple, depending on the package that you're that you're interested in. And the other thing I want to mention is that vacations by rail is. AARP's preferred rail provider, which means that if you're an AARP member, um, you get some additional member benefits and savings that other people who are not AARP members, um, members uh, who they do not receive because they're not AARP members. So uh, keep that in mind um, when you look at some of the savings and you hear about some of the savings that you have because they are an a, uh, if you're an AARP member, if you qualify, it might be worth just joining for that because uh, the savings that you get through Vacations by Rail would pay for that membership probably fivefold. So uh, think about that, uh, and uh, and we're proud of that relationship. I think it shows uh, the trustworthiness of uh, and 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 commitment to our customers that Vacations by Rail has. And we're proud to be uh, working with Via Rail Canada uh, to uh, to to give people the the best rail experiences on, on some of the most iconic trains in the world. And uh, I want to thank everyone for joining today. I want to uh, thank 
Lisa from Via Rail for spending the time uh, walking everybody through the various sleeping accommodations, introducing them to the Prestige class. Uh, again, brand new service. Um, uh, uh, I myself can't wait to take it because it's going to make a, a, a spectacular, a spectacular, legendary journey even, even, even more so. So, again, thank you for spending the time this afternoon. Uh, I'm Todd Powell with Vacations by Rail. Visit us at vacationsbyrail.com or contact a rail specialist. But let me just make sure that see if there's any questions. Uh, we can open this up for uh, question and answer. Um, question and answer here. Uh, I think I do have one. One question here: Can I get off the train at scheduled stops? Um, that's a great question. I think this is um, um, uh, an important question, particularly when you're looking at tailor making your uh, your trips. The trains run um, like Via Rail's Canadian service runs about um, three times a week, and uh, and so if you're going to get off the train you need to factor in that the next train won't be coming for a few days. So make sure that you, you put that into your itinerary. A lot of our itineraries are already planned so that, that uh, they take into consideration the schedule changes uh, the, or the scheduling of the train. So keep that in mind uh, that uh, it doesn't run every day. And then on the corridor service, Via Rail's corridor service, uh, frequent, uh, frequent transportation between those corridor cities on the east, Toronto, Montreal, Quebec, um, and then when you get to the ocean service, you have to keep in mind that that train doesn't run um, uh, doesn't run every day. Or um, and then you just have to make sure that uh, you know you have the accommodations built in to uh, to accommodate a train that's only running uh, one time per day or a couple of times per week. So our rail specialist can help you out with that. Let's see if there's any other questions. It does not look like. Um, Oh, one other question here, uh, Lisa. Are you still, still on? I'm still here. Okay. Um, do you know how many cabins there are on uh, in the Prestige class? How many are available? Uh, do, do you know that figure? Um, there's there's only one ca um, one car per train that is um, um, specifically for Prestige class, um, and I believe that there are. I think five cabins per train, but you know what? I'm going to find that out right now. Okay. All right. And then um, uh, when we when we send out the, uh, um, we'll have that in. A, we'll actually add that to one of our frequently asked questions. So, but uh, one train car, uh, prestige class car per train. So uh, I guess in a nutshell, what we're saying is that there is limited availability, and with such a new service, um, it's 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 going to sell out, and it's in, and selling out quickly. So. You know, work with our rail specialists to find a, a date in which prestige class is available, uh, and they'll be able to work with you on that. Okay, that looks like. Um, well, let's see here. That looks like. That looks like all of the uh, all the questions. Again, I want to uh, thank everyone for joining us. Uh, mention across Canada by train, uh, receive the $25 off per person. Uh, visit vacationsbyrail.com. Sign up for a newsletter if you haven't. Uh, you, they'll keep you up to date on any sort of special offers or new destinations. Uh, and follow us on uh, on and uh, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Um, again, I'm Todd Powell with Vacations by Rail. I want to thank Lisa for joining us from Via Rail, everyone, and have a great afternoon. Thanks.